the way everybody expected it would be. There was a solid lineup of international competitors on the track for the first day of cycling. Two of the world's best are Soviet Nikolai Kovsch and... Following this victory, the U.S. national coach said he knows the Soviets feel the pressure of the Americans breathing down their backs for world supremacy. The Soviets have an extremely strong team in Seattle, but the U.S. is primed, looks ready to fire, and anxious to take over the top spot in the world. And we'll see that coverage happening in the next hour again here. Thanks, Nick. Nick will be right on top of that. Right now... It's the music. I've talked about it. The Lions sleeps tonight because Unitas is here along with a capacity crowd at Heck Edmondson Pavilion. The place is <laughs> rocking. Wrestling is the world's oldest and most universal sport, possibly also the fairest, transcending the entire weight scale from Corey Bays at barely 100 pounds to Bruce Baumgartner at close to 300. But Russ, tonight we have the heavyweights. This is a team competition. In the first match, Corey Bays is up to the U.S. Well, Gamal Medzabulian is a very good wrestler for the Soviet Union. Corey Bays has been a real fire plug for the United States. He's undefeated in this competition. It's the first real major international competition for him, and he has really had the crowd behind him. 105 and a half pounds, Corey Bays from Putnam City, Oklahoma, a graduate from Ohio, rather from Oklahoma State University, against Nell Medzulia. Medzulian was a bronze medalist in the 89 World Championships. He's been a European champion for the United States, and, and he's a good one. This would really be a positive uh, win for Corey Bays if he were to upset uh, a wrestler that most people would pick as being better than him. Corey Bays has been very impressive throughout this tournament. They have had two common opponents. The Korean forfeited to both of them, apparently did not make weight. Meanwhile, the Bulgarian opponent, Corey Bays defeated Arsen Chetov 5-3. Medzumian defeated Chetov 8-1. But now it's the two against each other right here. And Corey Bays had a real problem in college. He's been too light for his weight class, 118. So this 105 is perfect for him. 118, the smallest weight category in college. They're down to 105 in international wrestling, and Corey Bays gets on the scoreboard first. Corey Bays, two points. A minute gone in the match, trying to turn him over. Corey Bays used that move. He picks him up by locking around the chest and puts him on his back, but the Soviet obviously had watched the videotape, was aware of what he did, and countered him in the middle of his move. So he initiated the action and put himself to his own back. The match is now tied to all. No points for an escape, but the Soviet got two points for the reversal, which caused exposure. The shoulders being exposed by Corey Bays. The match now two all. Three and a half minutes to go. The opening match, the gold medal competition between the United States and the Soviet Union. If Corey can get the knees down of Medzmuli and he will score another point, he'll get a reversal point. There it is. They should give one. He goes ahead again. Corey Bays takes the lead three to two. Corey Bays defeated Tim Vanny to make this team. A lot of competition within the United States at this weight category. You know, the crowd felt he could have had a couple more points there. He should get something there. He pulled him back over to his back. They're going to give him two. Anytime you can expose those shoulders to match, where you initiate any action, you're going to get points. Soviet and USA coaches. Joe C., Leroy Smith, at his 5 to 2 in favor of Corey Bays. He won his first international meet. That was in Tampa recently. Well, they, they didn't confirm those, Craig. There are three officials on every match. Two of the three must agree. The referee made the call for two for Corey Bays, but they're over now talking with the Matt chairman. Two of the three must agree. They're not going to put it on. It doesn't look like they're going to give the points. Well, now they've gone to seven. Well, they're fixing the clock. We'll get it for you in a moment. Back to five. That's what it should be, five to two. Actually, the clock says five to four. And two and a half minutes to go in the match. Corey Bays with a slim lead. It is now 5-5 five, five after that takedown. Well, when Corey Bays pulled Medzmullian back to his back, they're saying that the Soviet held him there. They also gave him two points. So that's why the score is, was 5-4. to four, And now Medzmullian got another takedown, so the match is now tied. With just over two minutes to go. There's Joe C., the U.S. coach. 
part of the capacity crowd, Heck Edmondson Pavilion. If you're new to international wrestling, the format has been changed since the Seoul Olympics. Just one period, five minutes in duration, non-stop action. If it is tied, the first one to score in sudden death. Corey Bayes trying for a takedown right here. He's got to get his knee down to score. There it is. Does. The lightweights always aggressive in going after each other. We have no exception here. Oh, he pulls him back over to his back. They're going to score some points for Mesmulian there, too, as well. Corey Bayes gets two, and he now leads eight to five. A minute 36 to go. Craig, there was no difference in that move. Three officials, two must agree. They call that one totally different than the move just a little bit earlier. They only gave points to Corey Bays. They did get, gave nothing to Mesmulian, and Corey Bays went flat to his back. Trying to get those ankles in the lace so maybe he can turn him over. Does he have him, Russ? Well, there's tremendous pressure here, but he's trying if he can get that elbow up. But Metzulian trying to counter, trying to get out of it. You hear Joe say, he's saying, go for it, go for it. 58 seconds to go in the match. And there they go. Danny and Dana Bays, Corey's parents. Obviously very nervous, very proud, however, of their son. 56 seconds to go. Corey Bays leading by three. Going for another takedown. He has the leg. He's going after that leg lace again. Russ, he hasn't been able to get the two together, but he has been very aggressive. Well, they're they're going to give the one point out. He is a leg attacker. He was, he was in college wrestling. He is an international. That's what's going to make him a great wrestler. He's really showing us a lot of stuff here in this competition. He's going to be a real tough competitor for the United States for many years to come. Less than 30 seconds to go. Corey Bays leading 9-5. to five. In control of the match the entire way. Well, the Soviet trying to counter here. It's very unusual for the wrestler on the bottom to try to counter, but time is running out. Now he's taking him up over his back. They're going to give those points. points to Corey Bays. Corey Bays is getting a lot of breaks here. They could score some of that for the Soviet, but they're saying he's initiating the action. They're letting the points go to Corey Bays. They're going to stay right there. And they're that's give it. the end of the match. An impressive start by the leadoff batter for the United States, Corey Bays. Danny, Danny and Dana Bays, his proud parents. Tears coming to the eyes. Well, this is a big moment. This is the start of a great career. There's no question about it. First time in major international competition. Corey Bays jumps into the arms of Coach Joe C. For many years, Corey Bays was said to be not strong enough to wrestle at 118. Now he possibly is the strongest 105 pounder in the world. There was a great, the move that really won it for him. He did it three, four times. It made the difference in the match. Pulls him back over to his back. Great move for a lightweight wrestler. He's going to be able to score a lot with that in the future. That's the opening match. Nine more to go. We'll be back from Heck Edmondson Pavilion in a few moments. Back to the gold medal team competition between the United States and the Soviet Union. On the mat now, Zeke Jones from the United States against Sergei Zambalov of the Soviet Union. The Soviet leads 1-0 with just over three minutes to go in the five-minute period. And Zeke Jones right there trying to get on top. And he has tied the score, rest or not. Well, he tried to get a reversal, but the Soviet Zambalov brought him back over his top. There's an awful lot of scoring. That's two points there. Turned him to his back with that crotch lip. We have to wait for the officials. Two of the three have to agree, so there's always a delay in the score going up, but there should be an exchange of points. Well, it is now 3-2. Zambalov leads Zeke Jones. We're nearing the halfway mark. Leg lace there, Zeke Jones now very good with this move, but they're going off the mat, out of bounds. There'll be no points. They'll bring them back to their center and put them back on their feet. The Soviet is now leading three to two. Every match here is very important. Both these wrestlers are relatively young international. Zeke Jones plays seventh in the world, and he has, has had more success than Zambalov. Zambalov is a relatively new wrestler on the Soviet team. But this match, they all add into the team score. Both wrestlers lost to Valentin Jordanov during this competition. Jordanov from Bulgaria 
won the individual gold competition. Zabalov took the silver, Zeke Jones the bronze, but the important part of the Goodwill competition is the team title. The United States has never defeated the Soviet Union in a major team competition worldwide. That's the World Championships, the Olympic Games, the Goodwill Games. They have a chance tonight. We saw Josie, the U.S. coach, and also Ivan Urigan, a man you're very familiar with, the Soviet coach. Well, this would be a, a great match for the USA to win, and all day today, the United States wrestlers have been very, very fired up. There's a, really been an enthusiasm that's hard to explain. I know this is important for them to, to, uh, to win this match, as it is for the Soviets. And coming into this competition, I would have uh, pegged the Soviets to win it, but with the enthusiasm the USA had against Korea today, and Zeke Jones is, is one of the young spark plugs for the team, this match is all important. If he can win this one, this would be an upset. To show you how strong the U.S. team is, Korea took the overall team competition, defeating Bulgaria moments ago, yet the U.S. won all 10 individual matches against the Koreans. But that means nothing right now. It is the U.S. against the Soviet Union. Zambalov leading Jones 3-2, a minute to go in the match. Both wrestlers have been cautioned. They don't stop the action now and they give a caution. One five-minute period. Wrestling keeps going no matter what happens. Well, a nice attack there by Zambalov, but Zeke Jones does a nice job of countering. No points scored on that. Now the Soviet is wrestling smart. He's staying aggressive even though he's ahead. If he lets up, he's going to get himself in trouble. Zeke trying to get in on that leg attack. The Soviet blocking, bent over, preventing him from coming in. He can afford to get called for another caution. He's still winning. 25 seconds to go. Zeke gets him around the waist, tries to trip him up, but again, good counter move by Zambalov, who backs up. Oh, a nice crotch lift. Oh, well, they're going to get two and two. I don't agree with that call. That was all a move by Zeke Jones. He stepped around on that counter and pulled Zambalov over the top, but they're going to give two for the Soviet. They have not confirmed the two for the Soviet. Now that's good. The referee made the call. Urigan is very upset. He was he was upset in the last match. He thought the calls were, were improper, and now he's very upset. He thought it should be a 2-2, two -two, but I think that's a right call. 4-3 to three favor of Zeke Jones. He initiated the action. He should be ahead. Joe C., the U.S. coach, talking to Zeke Jones, who has come from behind to take the lead. 4-3, 11 seconds to go. Avon Urigan on the mat right now. The coach from the Soviet Union. Now they're back to action. Less than 10 seconds to go. Zabula has to initiate a move, trying for a takedown. Zeke Jones trying to stay out of trouble. Well, he's, he's got and that is the match. He was defensive, but it was a great time for it. Nice victory. Zeke Jones comes from behind in the final 12 seconds to defeat Sergei Zambalov of the Soviet Union, four to three. The U.S. has won the opening two matches. The team score is now six to two. You get three points for the victory, one point for the defeat if you did score. Just the beginning of an exciting evening of wrestling here at the Heck Edmondson Pavilion. Now let's go back to Larry King. Only American ever to win three consecutive world titles, arguably the best we've ever had. He's got power, technique, strength, the whole package, obviously. So now let's look at what has driven him to excellence along his journey to these Goodwill Games. My journey to the Goodwill Games begins with my family. I'm from a family of 10. I have six sisters and three brothers. <laughs> we pulled off each other's emotions and excitement, and uh, it, was, it was a time that I think I learned how to make sacrifices. and motivates everyone, I hope. Um, definitely motivates me. I can't even think about losing. It's like taking a little bit of your heart and tearing it out. And I think that's why I've been, helped me be successful too, is because I hate it so much. It hurts so bad. 
I think about it sometimes, that I'm the best wrestler at my weight, and it scares me to give it up. And there's a lot of things that I still want to accomplish, you know. I want to be two-time Goodwill Games champion, two-time Olympic champion, and the best of John Smith has yet to come. Journey with John Smith. He's been called, by the way, the Mike Tyson of wrestling, and he's coming up soon. By the way, this arena where these wrestling matches are going on is called the Heck Arena here at the uh, Seattle, Washington scene. It's named after Clarence S. Edmondson, who the long, was the longtime basketball and track coach at the University of Washington back in the 30s and 40s. Right now, we'll take you back to the Heck, and here's Russ Hellickson and Craig Sager. Craig. Well, thank you very much, Larry. You're looking at John Smith as he gets ready for his match. Moments ago, Joe Melchiori from the United States defeated Ruslan Karayev by the score of three to nothing. The U.S. has won the opening three matches. We mentioned how impressive the U.S. was against Korea in the semifinals. The emotion, like a wave, sometimes can't keep its form. But the U.S. has been able to ride the crest so far. Russ an impressive start by the U.S. Well, we got one of the best wrestlers in the world coming out right now to go against the Soviet. The USA upset in the first three matches. The Soviets were favored in all three. There isn't any question that the emotion is in the American side. And right now, I don't think there's any way that Stefan Sarkisian can beat. There's no way that he can beat John Smith. John Smith has lost to him one time, but Smith is about as sharp right now as he can ever be. What about Joe Melchiori, who saw signing autographs? I mean, he had a terrible day yesterday. He came back strong today. A good performance against the Koreans and a commanding victory over Ruslan Karaya. But now we join the action with John Smith from the United States. As you saw, one of 10 children. His brother, Leroy Smith, the national team coach. He's on the sidelines with Joe C., the Goodwill Games coach, taking on Stepen Sarkeesian who lost to John Smith in the gold medal match, the Seoul Olympics 1988. But he came back to defeat John Smith in the 89 World Cup by the score of two to one. Two rivals, the two best in the world. Stefan Sarkisian is a great, great wrestler. There's uh, John Smith's father. He follows him everywhere in wrestling. There's his brother, Leroy, who's the national team coach. And right now, 30 seconds gone in the match. No score so far. The pressure is on Sarkeesian as far as the team competition. The pressure, of course, on John Smith being the three-time reigning world champion. First got his competition internationally with a victory in the 86 Goodwill Games when he was still competing for Oklahoma State. Sarkeesian is a tough wrestler for John Smith to compete against. He's about as good as Soviet, and that's why they bring him over here against him. He is so strong and powerful, and he's hard to penetrate penetrating. John Smith has a very low attack. He goes down almost to his knees and penetrates under, and Sarkisian is strong enough to stop it. Most of the Soviets cannot prevent it. A very unique style by John Smith. Many times he'll go to both knees, try to attack from the lower position. There he's down on one. Sarkisian's seen many films. He's also wrestled. He knows what's coming, but can he stop it? There he counters by going to his knees himself. Well, John Smith is versatile enough that he'll shift off to a different attack as he starts to wear him down. Heavily muscled as Sarkisian is, he has a tendency to get a little tired later in the match. John Smith's conditioning is one of the best things about him. Three minutes, 20 seconds to go. Well, they just cautioned John Smith. He's got his head down and blocking a little bit. He, he hasn't really opened it up, but he, you know, he doesn't want to make a mistake against a wrestler of the caliber of Sarkisian and go two or three points down. He's got to make sure that the move is really there. A caution against each of them. John Smith won 90 consecutive matches at Oklahoma State University. His younger brother, Pat, was an NCAA champion as a freshman this year. The first American to win three consecutive world titles. But he's taking on a tough competitor right here in Stepan Sarkeesian. Oh, great and counter moves there. No scoring by either. That was great wrestling action. Shot there and the counter. We're now at the halfway mark. His brother, Leroy Smith, shouting instructions. Down to both knees. Tries again. Now Sarkeesian, a great counter move again by Smith, backing out. Sarkeesian has great shots, but he's wrestling a real strategic match here. He knows that John is a great conditioned athlete, and he's kind of blocking off the shots. 
letting John Smith start to force some of them. It's a real good strategy. I don't know if it'll work for him if John can adapt and adjust and put enough pressure on to make the difference. It's going to be close. We now have two minutes to go in the match. No score. John Smith against Stefan Sarkeesian. Two but cautions now against Sarkeesian. Three and you're out of the match. It's intended to be nonstop action and it is. Now Sarkeesian has slowed the tempo down of this match. He's making John Smith wrestle his match right now. He's forcing John to take shots. He's blocking away. He, he isn't really going after aggressive style of wrestling at all. And I don't think the officials allowed to get a, away with it. You know, there's there's no score. There's a minute and a half to go, and he already has two cautions. They'll throw him right out of the match. But if there is a way to wrestle John Smith, this is it. There he gets the leg. But again, Sarkeesian backs away, trying to get out of it. John Smith, powerful, trying to get him. Wraps him around. Now puts him down. No Try control to roll yet. Him over. If he can roll him over onto his back to get the points or get the other elbow down. He's got to free that leg. The arm's got to clear there before they'll give the takedown point. Sarkeesian trying to switch to maintain control, come around and not let John Smith have it. They'll give it soon. There it is. One point for John Smith, the first point of the match. We have 55 seconds to go. Smith trying to roll him over on the back to get two more for the exposure. Have to break the 90 degree. He should get one there. So he can make that back face the mat. Now he gets out of it. They only give him about 15 seconds to really start to do something. If they're in the middle of some sort of a turn, they'll let it go. There he's got the leg lace. lace. There, there it is. him over for two points. John Smith, only a matter of time, got into that leg lace, rolled him over. The back exposure, two points. He's now up 3 nothing, And we have 12 seconds to go in the match. John Smith scoring in the final minute. Sarkeesian was up as he came up off the mat he was very upset because he's he's mad because they left him down so long he spent a lot more time down there than his usual international wrestling and it's no excuse for getting turned but he probably should have been back on his feet one takedown a point for Stepan Sarkeesian but there's only one second left in the match that point is important for team scoring he avoids the shutout and there it is John Smith just as we saw in 1988 in the Seoul Olympics, John Smith over Stepan Sarkeesian for the gold medal, and he gives the United States a commanding lead. They have won the four opening bouts, and they lead by the score of 12 to three. Nice leg lace here by John Smith. Really put, him out of, put it out of reach for him. Very good on his feet, but also very good on the mat. Coming up in a moment, Nate Carr will be back from Heck Edmondson Pavilion. Be it back at Heck Edmondson Pavilion, the campus of the University of Washington, right now at 149 and a half pounds. It's Nate Carr from the United States. No score so far in the match, but Nate has the leg of Arsen Fedzayev. No points right there. Arsen Fedzayev has dominated the world competition at this weight level. He was the world champion in 1983, 1985. He won the Good Wills competition in 86, followed with a world championship also in 87. He was the gold medal winner in 88. But here against Nate Carr, he is not having a good tournament. In fact, he suffered the first loss of this weight category ever to Chris Wilson yesterday. Well, he's not looking as good as I've seen him in the past. Uh, I think he may have wanted to skip this competition. And the Soviet Union, you don't really have a choice. But he did not look good. He's looked a little bit better today. And I think Nate Carr, this is kind of a revenge match. He wanted to beat him in the Olympics in 1988. He didn't get a chance to do it. I think it's an important match for Nate Carr. Nate Carr earlier today avenged the loss to Park Jong Soon, the most controversial decision of all wrestling in 1988. That was at the Seoul Olympics. That was in the bronze medal match. And now Nate Carr has a caution, his second one. No score. Nate Carr, a very explosive wrestler. And Russ, you think that he should possibly go after a takedown or be more aggressive instead of waiting as he both as he does so often to like the ninth inning. Uh, he's so powerful, and he, when he hits a shot, he just can't stop it. It, it. It's scary to think what would happen if he did it all the time in a match. Instead of waiting toward the end of the match, Patsayev isn't someone you want to make a mistake against, however, so I guess his strategy in this match is not unexpected. Two cautions right now against 
Nate Carr. One caution against the Soviets. Somebody's going to get cautioned out of this match if they don't start to shoot and attack each other. No score. Less than two minutes to go. The U.S. won the first four bouts of this match. Arsene Fetzayev. Each with two cautions now. They both have to be aggressive. If one of them tries to bid his time or stalls, he'll be out of the match. Nate Carr comes from a very huge wrestling family. His, his uh, younger brother had a brother, Jimmy Carr, who, our older brother, who was on the Olympic team when he was still in high school in 1972. He's had three other brothers that have been all Americans. I think there's 16 children all together in the family. Nate Carr, 30 years old. He's now the assistant coach at West Virginia University. A minute to go in the match. No score. Now they caution Fatsaya. Both wrestlers have two cautions against them less than a minute ago. They cannot let this match end in a 0-0 tie. Somebody will have to be cautioned out. The five-minute match is now down to a minute. Nate Carr for the United States. Arsene Fitzayev from the Soviet Union. And the referee. Well, they're calling for a third caution. I think they're just going to... Well, they're going to rule at a third caution against Nate Carr. And Fitzayev. They're going to finish? No. That's against only against Nate Carr. They're going to declare Fatsayev the winner of this match. Somebody has to shoot, otherwise we'll leave it in the hands of the officials. I don't necessarily agree with this decision. Nobody was doing anything. It's over. Well, Nate Carr suffering a controversial decision in the Seoul Olympics. Now possibly one he's not going to be too happy with right here. But as you mentioned, they don't waste any time. If you don't have action, they go after it. And there's Ivan Yurigin, the coach from the Soviet Union. The U.S. still leading 12-3. Nate Carr, Arsene Fetzayev, two of the greatest wrestlers in the world at the weight category, but the match decided by the referee who takes Nate Carr out of it with his third caution. Why? Well, when it gets down to that point when no points have been scored, there are four officials at that point. Three start out on it, but when one wrestler has two, a fourth official called a controller is brought in. If they don't wrestle, if three of the four officials now agree, they'll disqualify the wrestler. He wasn't being aggressive. I think that that match... Uh, was basically in Nate Carr's hands. He could have gone after some shots. He wasn't doing anything. Somebody had to be cautioned out, and it's just a decision of the officials. When they promise nonstop action, they mean it. We'll be back with more from the pavilion here at Heck Edmondson, but now let's go back to Larry King. Thanks, Greg. Quick as a cat. Kenny completely dominated his opponents at the 88 Olympics and 89 World Championships, and now he's primed for goodwill gold. From Stillwater, Oklahoma to Seattle, Washington, let's look at Kenny Monday's journey to the Goodwill Games. My journey to the Goodwill Games involves countless hours of training, hard work, dedication, discipline, and it spans two decades. I like to get into myself. I like to stay focused. You know, I just don't like to have distractions. I've always uh, been pretty self-motivated. If I want something as a goal that I want, then I'm, I'm going to make sure that I get it. As a wrestler, I would say I'm very tenacious, and I'm pretty explosive or quick. Well, actually, I think I was, I, I've been blessed with a natural ability to wrestle and just to be a good athlete. Uh, and then my mental attitude is, is very strong. I have a deep desire to be the best in the world, uh, deep desire to, to win. And when I'm out on the mat, I don't think about anything else than winning, and doing whatever it takes to win. For the most part, it is, it is a lonely road, especially when you're at the top. The discipline that goes into wrestling, the sacrifices that you make, uh, it, it, I think it makes you a better person. I honestly do. Just because you, if you can endure wrestling and, and go through the things that wrestlers go through, I think you can 
go through anything in life. I really do. I think you can handle uh, corporate America. I think you can handle uh, business. I think you can handle anything if you if you pay the price to be a successful wrestler. So maybe a cliche, Larry, but sports building character, at least revealing it. We'll see tonight. We're not kidding. I love these journeys. Oh, they're in great shape, these guys, huh? Now, more wrestling. We'll go to the Heck Edmondson Pavilion and Craig Seger and Russ Hellickson. Craig? Well, thank you very much, Larry. We are now at 163 pounds. Rob Cole from the United States is against Adlan Varaya from the Soviet Union. The score is 3-2. to two. Rob Cole is trailing. He is in the blue from the United States. Just a few seconds to go. Russ? Kenny Mundy had beaten Varaya in the Olympics. Uh, we expected this to be a close match, but the Soviets are starting to come back. They're starting to wake up. Uh, they lost four matches in a row. They're starting to get back in at Varaya. It is an experienced international wrestler. Cole is not. Of course, it was Varaya, as you mentioned, who lost to Kenny Mundy in overtime, the 88 Olympics. Cole is an NCAA champion from North Carolina. His father, William Cole, was the coach at Penn State, three-time NCAA champion at Iowa Teachers College, now Northern Iowa, trying to get a move. But Varaya, a very experienced wrestler, countering, pushing him away. And Rob Cole is going to run out of time. That is the end of the match. A valiant effort by Rob Cole. But Adlin Varaya wins the match by the score of 3-2. Well, it's got to be disappointing for Rob Cole, but he has not had a lot of international experience. Mariah wrestled the match he wanted to wrestle. Rob Cole's got to learn if he comes out, he's got to take charge of the match. He's a good wrestler. This is a good start for him, but uh, he'll win down the line. Nice match by the Soviet Mariah. The score after the first six bouts, the U.S. 13, the Soviet Union 6. Coming up next, Kenny Monday of the United States against Almaty Jabrailov from the Soviet Union. Jabrailov, the reigning world champion at 180 and a half pounds. Kenny Monday, the reigning world champion at 163. And there is Kenny Monday, the nemesis, as Nick Charles mentioned earlier, to the Soviet Union. Well, Kenny Monday has beaten uh, wrestlers virtually. Patsayev had gone up to 63 in the 19, 163 pounds in the 1989 World Championships. He had never been beaten by any international wrestler, and Kenny Monday beat him for the gold medal. Now, Fatsayev was here just in our last match and beat uh, Nate Carr. Jabroilov is a world champion. Kenny Monday has not wrestled at 82 kilograms, 180 and a half pounds. Rob Cole had beaten him in the wrestle-off to come here. Uh, he's moved up to this weight class uh, to give the USA you know, a good shot at winning this team championship. It'll be interesting to see if he can handle the weight uh, difference. A very intense individual, a great athlete. Played high school basketball in the sandlot with Wayman Tisdale. They grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma together. We saw him at the sideline warming up, trying to keep in shape. He has a great outside shot. But right now, he's trying to put a shot in Almaty Jabrail's knee, and there he tries to get it, but Jabrail, a good counterattack. Well, Kenny Monday needs to slow this match down at the beginning. The thing I get impressed most with Kenny Monday is the way he wrestles best in the big matches. He, he doesn't sometimes get us up for the, the small matches, the ones that don't really mean as much. When he gets into a big match like this, he usually surprises his opponent with some kind of a throw. He's got a lateral drop where he takes a man right to his back. It's very scary. And we may see that tonight. Once again, trying to get that leg. No score. Approaching the one minute gone mark right here in this match, 180 and a half pounds, a weight that Kenny Monday is not used to. Kenny is very long, though. He's hard to get in. On, it's hard for an opponent to get in on his legs. And if they do, he's very, very strong. He has good counterability, has good uh, aggressive offensive attack as well. There isn't any question right now. He's controlling the tempo in this match, just left like Fatsayev controlled in the last one. He's trying to slow things down. Well, nice move there by Jabrilov. He ends up with one point. Well, they're going to call this a slip throw. Wow. Vanya Regan can't believe the call. Well, I'm not sure I do either. That was a lot of work by Jabra Ilov for them to call it a slip throw. In international wrestling, if one wrestler attempts the throw and misses it, they're not going to give his opponent the benefit of, of a point for the other man's action. Now, they're calling that a slip throw. I say that was a lot of work by Jabra Ilov, and he should have had a takedown. That's a break for Kenny Mundy. Three minutes, 40 seconds to go in the match. Kenny Mundy strengthens his quickness, so that should not 
be a detriment, obviously, moving up in weight category. But Jabrila very strong. Let's see if the Puma can attack. What you worry about is a difference in power in the extra 15, 20 pounds for five minutes. When you're carrying that weight, moving around and adjusting, it can have an impact on your conditioning, and that could affect the way Kenny Monday wrestles in the end of this match. Both wrestlers have one caution. We started out with a lot of fire and a lot of hustle and a lot of, uh, of uh, technique. And the last few matches, everybody's gotten a little bit more tentative. I think they're a little bit apprehensive, protecting. Nobody's really opening up like we did in the early bouts. Kenny Muddy currently the assistant coach at Oklahoma State University, where he works with Joe C. Oklahoma State won the last two NCAA titles. We're right now, nearing the halfway mark. No score in this match. Kenny Monday, Amadi Shabrilo. Second caution against Jabrilo. There we see that tremendous underhook to a far ankle pick. He's very good. The size made a difference in that one. He wasn't able to lift up the chest and drive it across enough. Came very close, but the additional size that Jabrilo had prevented it from really working. Jabrilov locked up now on the body. He's got his hands locked up over the top. He's going to look for some kind of a throw here, but he may be picking on the wrong guy. Jabrilov knows how important this match is for his team. The Soviet Union has won the last two matches. And now they'll go back to the center of the mat. Kenny Monday against Amadi Jabrilov. Less than two minutes to go. Well, Coach Uregan of the Soviet Union not uh, really showing too much emotion there, but it's got to disturb him that he's behind this much. They did not perform as well in the European Championships this year as expected, so Coach Uregan is under a lot of pressure to perform well here. Not to make excuses, but all the governmental upheaval over in the country and everything that's going on, it's amazing that they can keep their mind focused on wrestling. Well, they need to. They have a rich tradition in wrestling. They've won the Olympics and world title every year since 1952, with the exception of 1960. And, of course, they were not in the Olympic Games in 1984 because of the boycott. They have been a dominant team. The USA is catching them. In 86, the U.S. was supposed to meet the Soviet Union in the championship of the team competition, but the U.S. was upset by Bulgaria on the way there. The U.S. got the bronze, but now it's the U.S. against the Soviet Union, the team competition. Each wrestler with two cautions, one minute to go, no score. Well, we're leaving it in the hands of the officials again. Both wrestlers with the two cautions, the officials, we have four of them now. The controller just moved in. Somebody's going to get thrown out of this match. They cannot let it end. Under the rules, it cannot be 0-0 when the time runs out. Somebody has to be disqualified. The officials will again decide. No official on the mat is from the Soviet Union or from the United States. Under international rules, the competitors must have officials that are from other countries. Just 30 seconds for one of the two wrestlers to make a move. We're getting a double caution called by the Matt Judge. A double caution by the Matt Chairman. They're going to throw them both out. That's an easy decision. That's the easy way out. Kenny Monday is saying, I'm trying to wrestle. Come on, what's going on? Well, they're calling. No, they're disqualifying them both. Well, these wrestlers have... They have got to get the action going. International rules say, Craig, the wrestling must be aggressive. If you're not aggressive, we're going to caution you. If you get three cautions, we're going to call you out. I agree with this call. Neither one of the athletes was really shooting or going after each other, and they got disqualified. They're both thrown out. There are no team points giving. It's, it's just like a no match. Well, the more your knowledge increases, the more the ignorance unfolds. I don't know if I agree with that call. I'd rather see the two out there wrestling, but... You're the expert, and that's the call. We'll be back with more from Heck Edmondson Pavilion. Jim Shear from the United States, one of the two Shear twins, going against Makarpe Kadartsev from the Soviet Union. Kadartsev has won the gold medal in the Goodwill Games in 86, the World Championship in 86, 87, 89, the gold medal, the Olympics in 88. His only loss in international competition ever was to Jim Shear, his opponent right here. Like we have seen moments ago, no score in a match that is already halfway over. What's happening, Russ? Well, I'm not sure if the Soviet strategy, I think they were a little bit concerned in the early matches because they were aggressive and they were getting beaten. 
And it's almost now like they've shut down shooting. It, it might be a coaching strategy, although Kadarcev is trying to shoot. Jimmy Shear has not been scored on in this competition, so this isn't going to be easy. Kadarcev, as you said, Craig, the only loss he has in international competition is to Jim Shear, and that happened in the 89 World Cup. So this should be another close, close match. The United States uh, is in charge of this. Obviously, they're looking for the team championship victory, so they're not as concerned about opening up and making mistakes at this juncture in the match. Well, Jim Shear unscored upon. Kadartsev has won his four matches as well. Two of them unscored upon. The other two he won by pin. And now both have cautions. If the match is 0-0 as the final seconds tick down, the official has to do something. And there are the parents of Jim Shear from a family of nine children. Grew up in Mobridge High School, South Dakota. And Jim Shear now. He already has his MBA from the Kellogg Graduate School of Management from Northwestern University. How many, how many little towns, Craig, can claim uh, two people like Jim and Bill Shear? They get all fired up every time they're in major competition. A minute to go. Jim Shear from the United States against Vaharkov Kadartsev from the Soviet Union. Kadartsev locking around the chest of uh, Jim Shear, trying to block him, moves into the single leg. We're going to see some points here. This should end up in some scoring. He has to put the knee down on the mat to get control. They will not give a takedown. In high school or college, this would be one, but not in international. A knee must touch the mat to score the takedown point. Jim Shear, obviously in trouble right here. And there's the back exposure. And he gets two points. He should have given up the one. He should have let him take him down instead of giving up the two. It's hard enough to get one point back. Now he hurt his back. That was a tough break. He should have just conceded the one-point takedown. Got himself injured a little bit and ended up losing two points for the exposure on the edge of the mat. And he hurt his back. Here's exactly what happened. As you mentioned, he could have put his knee down, given up the one point. A takedown would have been awarded to Kadartsev. But instead, he grabbed the legs. Kadartsev did it very quickly. It was really hard for him to concede. I think he realized at that moment that it was a mistake. Hurt his back and lost the two back exposure, but he's ready to go again. 30 seconds to go. Jim Shear behind, two to nothing. He defeated Kadartsev in the 1989 World Cup. The score was 5 2. As we mentioned, Kadartsev's only loss in international competition. Trying to go for the knee. Now, Kadartsev just blocking off. They may give him his second caution. They have but it isn't going to make any difference. He's been the only man to score points. They're not going to caution him out. They bring him back to the center. Time running out. Two cautions each man now. Uregan looking a little bit more relaxed now. And that's, that's going to be the end it. of the match. So the Soviet Union defeats Jim Shear, Makarkov Kadartsev. And right now the score is 13 for the U.S. Nine for the Soviet Union. More to come. After an impressive opening start by the United States, victories by Corey Bay, Zeke Jones, Joe Melchiori, and John Smith, the Soviet Union has come back. Arsen Fedzaya victorious. Adlin Varayev, Makarpet Kadartsev, one double disqualification. The last four matches have resulted in not a victory for the United States. Up next, Bill Shear from the United States, the twin brother of the man we just saw moments ago against Alexander Golovkov from the Soviet Union. Russ, what can you tell us about this match? Well, normally I would say it would favor Bill Shear. Bill Shear has been a world champion. Golovko is very young. He's not an experienced international wrestler for the Soviet Union. But Bill has been nursing an injured groin, and he hasn't really wrestled a lot in, uh, in this competition. So it's going to be if his if his uh, injury holds up, I think Bill Shear will dominate this one. But if it's a problem for him, Golovko is pretty tough. He can hang in the match pretty good. We have a slight pause in the action right now. Joe C. watching. The officials are talking about the situation down on the center mat, possibly about all the uh, maybe cautions being awarded to the different referees. But you seem to indicate that you have agreed so far. Well, if the wrestlers aren't going to compete, somebody has to make the call. And I think the international wrestling moved in the right direction when they try to get the officials to step up the action. The smartest thing we ever did was go to five minute matches to shorten uh, the amount of time that the wrestlers are out there. Right now, Milan Ersigan, who's the president of FILA, 
has actually come down along Matt's side. He's talking to some of the officials. I think you have to understand, Craig, if these officials don't do a good job, they're all ranked exceptional or they wouldn't be in this competition. They can be banned from officiating for a year if Milan Ersigan, the president of FILA, which is the Na uh, international wrestling organization, thinks they're not doing a good job. Uregan has gotten Ersigan involved in this uh, controversy. He does not think the calls have been right. Obviously, they haven't gone in his direction. So that's probably why he's reacting that way. But right now the officials are being brought together and they're getting some direction from Ursigan on how to make the rest uh, calls in the rest of these matches. Just moments ago we saw Nate Carr, one of 16 children in that family. John Smith, one of 10 children in his. The parents of the Shear twins, John and Frank, had nine children. What is going on? Do you think that maybe because you're from a big family that you you grow up fighting for a scrap or fighting for that extra biscuit, fighting for a space in the bed or fighting to sit on grandma's lap? Oh, I don't think so. I think that's kind of a coincidence uh, that they're all that big a family. Get, the other families are smaller, too. But you get a lot of uh, camaraderie that way. You get, also get a lot of workout partners that way, too. <laughs> it helps get you a little better. Maybe that's the key ingredient. You said you agreed with the decisions about the cautions. Possibly they were correct, but in my opinion, that's not good for wrestling. When you have Kenny Monday, Amadi Jabrilov, 30 seconds to go in a match, and suddenly the referee decides it. Well, what they need to do is to change the international rule then to say at that point, let's just let it be decided. The first point, you go, and if, you, if uh, somebody goes off the mat, that other man is the winner. But that isn't the rules. That isn't the way they're called. We're going to start this match now, Craig. Well, Bill Shear is out there. Now, Ivanya Regan, the coach from the Soviet Union, has returned. He has not gone over to his corner. He is being motioned back. Now he wants to go up into the stands. Regan is the man who defeated my analyst, my partner up here, Russ Hellickson, for the gold medal in the 76 Olympics. I hope he's not coming up here. <laughs> I really don't think he has any business, does he, to come into the stands? Well, as you can see, he is not happy with the decisions that have happened most recently, although the United States has not won a match in several moments. Up next, though, Bill Shear from the United States, Andre Golovka. We promise when we come back, we will have action from the Heck Edmondson Pavilion. Stay with us. This the action has resumed. Any questions about the Goodwill Games turning into the Illwill Games were erased when Ivan Uregan, the Soviet coach, winked, went back to his corner with a cold Pepsi and a new towel. He's over there back in action. You have not missed anything. No score. And there's your Regan on the sidelines. Just over a minute and a half gone in this match. Bill Shear from the United States. 220 pounds against Andrei Golovko of the Soviet Union. The team scores now 13 to 9. You get three points for a victory. One for a defeat if you do score. This match very pivotal for the team competition. That's how important this match is and how close the competition is between the two superpowers of wrestling. Well, Bill Shear is a world champion, and I, he's always been able to compete under pressure, and he knows that this is an all-important match for him, but he's had that groin injury, and we saw him kind of hobble off the edge of the mat there early. I think it is really bothering. He's only wrestled in one other match, and he can't be 100%, but is it going to be enough to, to beat a wrestler who's inexperienced like Golovko? His only real claim to fame is that he won the national tournament in the Soviet Union, which is quite, quite an accomplishment. Bill's wife, Teresa, looking on. They have two daughters, Alexandra and Ariel. My daughter, Casey, likes to be called Ariel. She's seen The Little Mermaid enough times and she thinks she can swim underwater. Two and a half minutes of this match. Bill Shear against Andre Golovko. Halfway point, two minutes and 30 seconds. Well, Bill Shear very close to retirement. I think if he'd have wrestled throughout this competition, they, this may have been his final competition. He's taking a job in the fall, but uh, maybe now he'll reassess and reconsider. Doesn't really want to go out in a match where he had an injury, but he's had a long and illustrious career for the United States. Like his brother, he was an NCAA champion at Nebraska, but unlike his brother, he got his MBA from Indiana University. He's a Hoosier, his brother a Wildcat. No score, just over two minutes to go. The heavyweight division, 100 kilos, 220 pounds. Well, Bill Shear is a shooter. His groin injury has got to be hampering him right now because he generally penetrates. They're going to assess the second caution against Bill Shear because you're going to see him penetrating. He has a nice deep step, and he's just not doing it. So I think he's protecting very much against that leg. They might have been better off putting in the second team 
wrestler Kirk Trost who also did weigh in here but you hate to take away that opportunity from a guy of the caliber of Bill Shear. He's such a nice guy and he wants to be in this competition. And he's earned it. All the months and years of training. Now they're calling the second caution against Golovko. All of the matches going the same. The Soviets are not shooting. They've been shooting. We, we, we watched matches earlier. The total domination pins. They may have a little bit more respect, but I'm thinking the Soviets may almost be deciding that this is the way to wrestle the United States to stay close and get things to go their way. Well, we have a different official than we had earlier, but I think they're being too liberal with these cautions. When they gave one to John Smith, as aggressive as he is at all times. Well, there's Shear on a shot. Nice counter by Golovko. That's going to put him down for the takedown. They're going to give him one. That was initiation by Shear, but he got caught on that counter, and Golovko will score one. The first point of the match. One half minute to go. Andre Golovko from the Soviet Union leading Bill Shear. Now 25 seconds to go. The two coaches, Ivan Yurigan, Joe C. Well, Shear not really shooting and opening up. It's the only way he's going to get back in is to try to force up. That injury's got to be bothering him. Because this is not Bill Shear. He would shoot. He can't penetrate. Golovko back in on the leg. Time running down. He can get the two points. There it he's is. Got it. They're going to get it. Second. He's going to win it at the, the end. Final second of the match. Bill Shear, a tremendous move, exposing the back of Andre Golovko. And if this is indeed the final match for Bill Shear, what a way to go out. Ivan Yurigan, the Soviet coach, back on the mat again. Well, here we see Golovko. All he wanted to do was hang onto the leg and stop everything Bill Shear had. He pulls him through on the gut rinse. That's two for the tilt. There's no question about it. Was it before time ran out? That's the only question. Yurigan must be arguing that it was before time ran out. Joe C. Jumping up and down, Ivan Yurigan, however, very upset. Well, Bill Shear also very excited. We just got worded, Craig. They're also protesting the 52 kilo Zeke Jones match where we had those controversial tilts in it. And they're really not going to let out the official team score until they make some decision on that. I, I don't know how they can protest this match, Craig. This. That was a two-point tilt right at the end, and we watched the clock go down. I don't think it was out. Bill Shear deserves to win because that was an aggressive two-point move that he hit right at the end of the match. Well, the unofficial score then is the United States 16, the Soviet Union 10. There's Andre Golovko, who had the match until the final second. Bill Shear. From victory, taking victory away from Golovko. We still have one match to go. It is the super heavyweight division. The two best in the world, Bruce Baumgartner from the United States, David Gobishevili from the Soviet Union. If you have followed wrestling for a time, these two met in the 1986 Goodwill Games. Bruce Baumgartner got the victory there. Gobishevili, however, defeated Baumgartner in the gold medal match in the Seoul Olympics. These two are very familiar with each other. Well, this was the 14th time in their career they have wrestled. And what a contrast in styles. Bruce Baumgartner is very thick, very big. He's six foot two, but Gobert Javili is six foot six. He almost looks like a basketball player, but he has tremendous wrestling technique, more of a counterer than he is an attacker. Bruce Baumgartner, one of the greatest wrestlers, heavyweight wrestlers the United States has ever had. Eyeing up, I think, that 1992 as maybe his retirement, but he's won the world championships. He's won the Olympics. Very dominant wrestler in the United States. He hasn't lost uh, since 1982 in this country. Well, he's a very aggressive wrestler. I doubt if he will get cautioned out of this match, but... The way things are going, you never know. But Bruce Baumgartner in the blue from the United States. David Gobishevili from the Soviet Union in the red. Gobishevili has the height advantage. 
But in wrestling, I think it isn't necessarily to your advantage. Sometimes it's a disadvantage. It's hard to protect your legs. Baumgartner has a tremendous double leg. It's kind of his trademark. He'll power through you and drive you right to your back. And Goba Javili knows it. He's wrestled him enough times. Baumgartner has won nine of their previous 13 matches. He's beaten him the last three times, so I, I think he feels comfortable in this match. They've had two common opponents here at this competition. Bruce Baumgartner won by passivity over Cho byung in of Korea. Meanwhile, Goba Javeli pinned him. And Goba Javeli gets the first point right there with a takedown. They both fought the Bulgarian heavyweight, Kirill Barbatov. Baumgartner won by the score of 7-2. Goba Javeli, 8 to nothing. And Ivan Uregan has a, had a tough evening so far. Bruce Baumgartner's parents, Bob and Lois, are looking on. Bruce is now coaching at Edinburgh University, a graduate of Indiana State. And a nice takedown by David Gobijavili. Well, this is turning back the other way. The last three matches, Bruce Baumgartner has really controlled David Gobijavili. Gobijavili got a counter early and scored, and now he was in on a deep single leg, pulled it in, and takes Baumgartner down for another takedown. Gobijavili grew up in the town of Kuruti. He says there are 50 people that live there and all are Gobijavillis. He now lives in Belisi. Has a degree in economics. His wife, Arena, is a pediatrician. Two rivals, the two super heavyweights. Bruce Baumgartner, David Gobijavilli, 286 pounds. The score is two to nothing in favor of Gobijavilli. Three minutes to go in the bout. Bruce Baumgartner has been so aggressive. Why has he changed his strategy right here? I don't know, and I don't think it was a good idea. David Govijabili has been relatively defensive throughout this competition, and he's been aggressive. This is unusual for David Govijabili to be able to stop that leg shot, shot that uh, Bruce Baumgartner has, but he's shutting him right down. Baumgartner has had a shoulder injury. Maybe he doesn't have the strength to pull that leg in. Well, when you get pumped for these matches, you know, it was a minor one. He's got to be ready. He's locked around the waist. This could be trouble. Well, he gets one. He would have liked more than that, but he'll take the one. It is now two to one. We just passed the halfway mark. Baumgartner with a point for the takedown. Harvey still trails. Trying to roll Gobichavelli over onto his back. Well, he's got the leg combination in, trying to put a lot of pressure down on the hip and thigh to turn him, but the referee will stop the action and bring them back up to their feet. They go at it again in the center of the mat. Nervous group, Bob and Lewis. Well, they've been following him a long time. His wife, Linda, uh, Bruce's wife, Linda, is usually here. She's back home. Uh, one of the few times she hasn't been at the competition. She's a trainer. Well, she is watching. Two to one, Gobichavelli with the lead over Baumgartner. The final match of the team competition between the United States and the Soviet Union. The gold medal duel competition here at the Goodwill Games. Baumgartner looking for that leg. Gobichavelli is so tall when he extends himself, it is hard for Baumgartner to get in there unless he goes really low and comes up. And, he, and he's been able to do it before. He, Goba Javili is doing a tremendous job of countering out. He's, he's wrestling a very smart match, and Bruce isn't able to really set up that powerful driving double that he's had in the past. If the match is tied at the run of regulation, they go into a sudden death, the first one to score. But Baumgartner needs a takedown here to tie it. He is down 2-1. A minute 10 to go. Well, we have a caution called against Goba Javili. Baumgartner now in on this single leg. Very extended, though. Going to lose his power here. He's going to have to pull himself back up to his knees. He doesn't want to get up another point. There it is. One point takedown for Goba Javili. Great counter move by Goba Javili. Initiated the action. Baumgartner did. But Goba Javili was able to counter it. It is now 3-1 with 43 seconds to go. Referee stops the net. This match against the United States and the Soviet Union, very uncharacteristic. Generally, the USA dominates in the upper weight classes. I would, you'd have to say today that the, the real spirit of the match was in the first four weight classes, the, the lighter weight wrestlers. They really carried this match. You can write a script, but it doesn't always go as planned. 
This is the final match. Super heavyweights, Baumgartner losing three to one, 20 seconds to go. Now he's not gonna be able to pull this in. Goba Javelity so long and so heavy. Bill Shear pulled his match out moments ago in the final second. Can Bruce Baumgartner do the same? Time running out. Well, they're still gonna win this dual meet unless they change an earlier score because Goba Javelity is only going to score three points for this victory. But and that is, that is the end of the great rivalry between Gobajavelli and Baumgartner here at the 1990 Goodwill Games. Gobajavelli wins the match three to one, but according to our scoring, the U.S. wins for the first time in a major dual competition or a major team competition over the Soviet Union by the unofficial score of 17 to 13. Let's go now to Larry King. Larry.